God for this morning. It's a glorious time in the presence of God. And having come before him, we know that he will do us good. Tell somebody, God will do you good this morning. He has already begun doing you good. Hallelujah. From last Wednesday, we've been here praying. As we begin with Jesus for the year 2022. And the topic we've been looking at is beginning with Jesus. God fortifying our walls with his gracious hands. God fortifying our walls with his gracious hands. And thankfully, God spoke to us in diverse means through word of prophecy, through word of wisdom, word of knowledge, number of times. Um, one of the things that I observed in the course of the week whilst we prayed that, that God was confirming visions. So somebody sees this vision and he gives a similar vision to the other person. And that is an indication that indeed God is with his church. And one of the promises that God gave us as we were being ushered into this year that God was going to, God said he was going to pour out so much giftings upon the church. And we have seen them manifesting marvelously to the glory of God. Hallelujah. Last week we began a teaching on the church as the equipping center for the possessing the nation's agenda where I spoke on the topic, hunger precedes equipping. Hunger precedes equipping. I made us aware that the month of January and the month of February will be dedicated to this focal area as far as the theme for the year 2022 is concerned. And I made mention of the fact that there are four kinds of hunger every church member in this center must avail himself or herself to. And I said, we need to look at hunger for his word. In other words, every member of the church, before you can be equipped, you must first be hungry for the word of God because the word of God is the foremost tool for equipping. Then we look at hunger for his presence. Hunger for his presence. Going before God in prayer, in fasting, our devotional life being taken to a higher dimension. All of us making, having a desire to go before God, both at the individual level and at the corporate level, where we are not forced to come to the house of the Lord. We also talk about hunger for his knowledge, where we're encouraged to read books, Christian literature, books that will enhance, of our, or enhance our understanding of God and the things related to God. Books that will enhance our understanding of the issues of the kingdom. Then the last hunger we spoke about is hunger for his work. And we said the more we become hungry for his work and avail ourselves to his work, the more he opens up more opportunities unto us for us to be relevant in the kingdom. You remember that the first night the prophets that we read out indicated that if you don't avail ourselves, a time will come, you will become irrelevant in the kingdom. Maybe far from us, all of us will be relevant in the kingdom because we are all availing ourselves as true soldiers of the Lord's army. This one, I want to break from that teaching. We will continue next week. We want to break and look at what we call the mobilization of squads. We have been told that we have been equipped with weaponry to do exploit. And one of the things that God has laid on the leadership of the church, looking at um, the global church, is that each and every one of us will be identified with a specific ministry. A specific ministry or ministry opportunity. So this morning's engagement um, is not necessarily to teach, but to open up our understanding to the forms we feel last two weeks, um, no, last three weeks, last two weeks, and some of us last week, we gave us some forms out. Remember, we gave this form out, and each and every one of us was supposed to fail. So we want to show more light on this form that we failed, because work begins from now. Hallelujah. Tell somebody, work begins from now. Tell another person, work begins from now. Hallelujah. Before I continue, we have a wonderful elder in our midst. We have Elder Kofi Edusepoku here. 
together with Mama Abna Samoa. Mama Abna, right, right. You're welcome. You're coming all the way from UK. Um, Dagenham, eh? Dagenham Central Church of the Pentecost. God bless you, Daddy and Mommy, for joining us. Hallelujah. So this morning, as I said, we're looking at basically what the whole idea of mobilizing the squads is all about. So that as, as squadron leaders call us, we will know the reason why they are calling us and for what purpose we will be, we, we'll be made part of a particular squad. Now let's take scriptures reading from Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 to 12. Ephesians 4, 11 to 12. Then we'll read Hebrews 13, 20 and 21, which we read last week. Ephesians 4, 11 to 12, and Hebrews 13, 20, 21. Taking the first scripture, the NIV. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. So the idea of God giving or Christ, giving the church men as gifts, apostles, pastors, prophets, evangelists, teachers, is that the church, the people, will be equipped for works of service or for the work of the ministry. Praise the Lord. So that's very important, which means that every one of us, by default, has been called into ministry. So the possessing the nation's agenda is all about availing ourselves to the cause of the ministry. Ministry within and ministry without, but more importantly, ministry without. Ministries outside the walls of the church. But the understanding we need to have from this scripture is that we have been equipped for works of service. So you must be identified with a certain kind of service. A certain kind of service. Now, let's look at the second scripture. Hebrews 13, 20, 21. Now, we looked at this extensively last week. But I want us to just uh, reflect. Now, may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with every good thing for doing his will. And I said doing his will is serving his will in the world. Serving his purpose in the world. For doing his will. And may he equip us in us what is pleasing to him. Through Jesus Christ to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. And so the church is to be equipped with every good thing in Christ Jesus to serve the will of God. And the will of God goes beyond us. The will of God goes beyond you. In other words, you are supposed to become an instrument through which God will use or minister unto others. One of the visions that came on the 31st night, we didn't get opportunity to share with you, was that God, God revealed to someone of, one of us that he was giving us tools Tools. Tools. And so each and every one of us has been handed with a tool. Why? Because we are being handed onto with an assignment. You have an assignment. That is why the mobilization of the squad is very important. Tell somebody you have an assignment to perform. Now, now let's come to the subject matter. Now, the Bible gives several images of the church. Last year, we were looking at the bride, a glorious church, but specifically, Jesus, that Jesus being a husband to the church, who is the bride, to the bridegroom. So, you have the church as a bride. We have the church as the household of God. The church as a household of God. We have the church being classified as a royal priesthood. So, you have very several images that the scripture um, gifts to the church. But this year specifically, we're looking at the church as the army of God. And so, by default, you are a soldier of the Lord. 
That is why Paul tells Timothy that endure hardship with me as a good soldier. So every believer is a soldier of the Lord. So that's the focus for the year. And as a soldier, we are serving God's purpose or his agenda in the world, which I said earlier. My people of God, your world begins with your home. Your world begins with your home, with your family. So it means that you have a responsibility as a soldier to your home, as a soldier in your family. Now, armies work in units. We have battalions. We have what we call companies. We have what we call platoons. Then we have the squads. So let me say that, that from the letter that we have been taught, we have four units. We have the black, uh, battalions, we have the companies, we have the platoons, and we have the squads. Now when Lieutenant Colonel uh, Kumiwood, who touched on this topic during the HES meeting, which I was privileged to be part as a supporting staff, made us aware that when you're talking about battalions, we are referring to the district. So PIWC Tesson as a whole is what? A battalion. Tell somebody we are a battalion. Oh, we are a battalion. Then he said the companies is what we call assemblies. So that we gather here specifically, we are a company. Now, Tesson assembly added to us is also a company. So together we become a battalion. So the companies are the two assemblies. So PRWC as a whole is a battalion. Then the English is a company. Then the Chi is also a company. Then he made us aware that we have platoons. Now the platoons in our context is the ministries. And here we are referring to the ministries that the five ministries, I mean the PEMM, the children ministry, the evangelism ministry, the, what again? The youth ministry, right? So these ministries are the platoons. Then the basic unit of it is what we call the squads. The squads. So the squad is the smallest of the units. From battalions, we come to the basic, which is the squad. Now he defines a squad as having a maximum of 10 soldiers and a minimum of nine soldiers. Ten being maximum and nine being minimum. So we are going to put together in groups of tens and nines. Hallelujah. And we are going to wage war in this era where darkness is prevailing. We are going to make sure the light of God will still shine wherever God has placed us, beginning from our homes. Hallelujah. Now, we were told that squads are constituted as soon as soldiers pass out from training. So the very moment a soldier passes out of training, the person is made to be part of a squad. So going forward, anyone who joins PRWC Tessano, the person right and then will be given the opportunity to choose a ministry opportunity he or she wants to pursue. Now, the idea of these squads is that we want to give every member of the church of Pentecost an opportunity to do a specific ministry. Now, possessing the nation's agenda, in other words, bringing transformation to our various spheres of society is a cross-cutting thing we must all avail ourselves. In other words, wherever you find yourself, you must shine because you are the light of the world. So we are all being thrown out into the world to pursue an agenda by way of our lives. Jesus said, let your light shine before men so that others will see your good works and give praise to God. In other words, they will come to appreciate your light and come to the light. And whenever they come to the light, it gives praise to God. I we together. So that was something we must all do, cross-cutting. However, having done that or availing ourselves to that, every one of us can be part of a specific ministry which you diligently pursue not only in 2022, but the years to come. But beginning from this year, there must be a specific ministry that you are going to avail yourself to. So what we did last three weeks is to identify 18 
ministry opportunities for which we gave forms out for you to fill. Now, if you are here, your form is still with you, um, and it's here, you can just lift up your hand, or ushers will come for it. Or maybe you feel you, it's still at home. Please, you take one and you fill it for us. Yesterday, we went through the list and we realized that some of us have not filled the form. And so, if you have, you filled it by at home, please just pick one. So, the ushers, please, ushers, move around. Uh -huh. So, you fill, whilst I'll be ending very soon, make sure that you fill it and you, you give it back to us today. Not tomorrow, today. Because we want to finalize the formation of the squads. That's why you have to cut short the teachings on the church as the equipment center to do this. Because work must begin from now. You have no time to waste. So if you have not filled your form, please take one and fill. The idea that there are 18 ministries listed out there. The 18th ministry is a repetition of ministry one. So you ignore the 18th ministry or the, the, the ministry number 18. You, you ignore it because it's captured in ministry number one. But let me quickly read through the ministries, right? We have the first ministry opportunities, hospitals, prisons, and orphanage ministry. Hospitals, prisons, and orphanage ministry. We have new members or new converts and discipleship ministry. New members and new convert discipleship ministry. We have pastoral care, visitation, and follow-up ministry. Pastoral care, visitation, and follow-up ministry. So that's the third ministry area. Four, we have protocol and ocean ministry. Now, we indicated that this one is an in-house ministry. So whoever chooses protocol and ocean ministry, we have to choose another ministry which is outside the church. So which means that you can join two ministries, but not more than two. You can join two ministries, but not more than two. Whoever chooses an in-house ministry must choose a ministry that will take you out of the church. Are we together? So then we have the choir. The choir, specifically the celestial voices, which also includes the choreography and drama. Right? So that one is an in-house ministry. So if you choose that ministry, you must choose another ministry outside the church. Then we have home and urban missions which we already know. Seven, chaplaincy ministry and ministry to mechanics. You realize that we have a lot of garages around. So we have dedicated people who go to these garages to have devotions with them. And so if you want to be part, you join. So chaplaincy ministry and ministry to mechanics. That is one. So number seven. Number eight, ministry to persons with disabilities, which is also not new. Nine, go ye ministry. That is an evangelistic outreach ministry. Go ye ministry. Ten, schools outreach ministry, which we are also doing very well in that area, but we still need more. In fact, the one I went through, we had quite a number of people joining that ministry. Then we have church compound and auditorium cleaning. It is also an in-house ministry. Please, um, you can take the forms to the children ministry. The teachers there, some of them have not failed. And so find out and get them to fill for them to submit church compound and auditorium ministry which is auditorium cleaning ministry which also an in-house then we have community service environmental care and fitness club community service environmental care and fitness club then we have ministry to expert and corporate executives ministry to expert or expatriate and corporate execu executives. We have Reader's Club and Library Ministry. So you realize that we have so many ministry opportunities. Reader's Club and Library Ministry, which is also an in-house ministry. We have PIWC Student Ministry. I realized that this ministry brought some confusion because I realized all the students were taking this ministry. No. This ministry is for those who will be visiting our students outside, I mean, in the various campuses. So this one is not for students. This is for those of us who are out of school, who are working, but will be tasked with visiting our students, calling them, checking on them, send them, mobilizing some provisions, sending to them. Some of us have been doing that already, but we want to enhance it. So that's PIWC Students Ministry, ministering to our students when they go to school. 
Then we have the media ministry, which is also an in-house ministry. Then intercessory ministry, that are our prayer teams. Then the 18th one is the children ministry workers. Our numbers are increasing and it's overwhelming the teachers we have. So we want to get in more teachers, which is also an in-house ministry. Praise the Lord. So we expect every member to get this form. Please, if you have not filled the form and submitted, please do so right now. Right now. Because next week, by the time you come to church next week, we'll paste the various quads on the notices. So what we're going to do is that we're going to group ourselves in nines or tens in each of these ministry areas. So where we have a ministry area having less than 20 people registering, we are going to divide you into two and we'll appoint what we call squadron leaders. The leaders will collaborate to make sure that they pursue the agenda based on their own plan that they pursue or they'll be pursuing in the course of the year. After next week, in our calendar of activities, in the month of February, we'll have a day where we'll organize a training for all the squadron leaders. Synopsis for each of the ministry will be developed and given out. So every ministry will have an idea of what the ministry stands for and what is re required by the ministry. So we'll list everything out for you, what and what we require of you to avail yourself to. So it's very important we take note of that. Every month we'll be reporting to the presiding elder and the resident minister. And progress report will be taken from them also mid-year and annually. So people of God, this is the squad's formation which we are going to avail ourselves to this year. Because the equipping is supposed to yield a certain effect. And the, by God's grace, God has given wisdom to our church leaders and they say that this effect we are believing that one of the sure means is putting ourselves in squads. And a squad is a unit of action. Every squad is a unit of action. It's not where we just move around and play church. No. It's a place of serious business which all of us, including the pastor, I chose two areas. Intercessory prayer and community service. So as a pastor, I'll make sure that whenever these teams meet, I'm there. Apart from my own personal prayer team, I have to be part of this squad. And also, whenever we are going out for medical outreaches, environmental care campaigns, I have to be there. That is my ministry. Apart from standing here and providing pastoral care. Are we together? Are we together? Any question? So as this morning service is for us to have an understanding of the squad. Does anybody have a question? Please ask a question so that we all move from a common understanding. You can speak any language. Yes, mommy, so please. But if you speak French, get somebody to help us. <laughs> Your ma mama, yes, so, yes. Chris. Yeah, the squads. Uh, if you join the uh, first one for uh, um, hospital and... Yes. Uh, hospital, prison, cells, orphanage, yes. Yes. Please, uh, are we going to draw a, a plan so that we we'll know maybe this uh, week or this month we are going to this place yes. or so that we can... Yes. Then yes. So each, in fact, each squad will present their plan for the year. So where we have three squads under one ministry, the leaders will come together and develop a plan for the year. In fact, we'll be expecting, when we meet them, we'll be expecting the first six months what they intend to do. They can identify some hospitals, some prisons or cells, and they divide themselves among those areas. We are not going to go to one hospital. Right? So there will be a strategy that they will have to put together to make sure they minister in these hospitals that they have identified. So there will surely be a plan. Okay, the next one is Let's say uh, we are going for we are going to an orphanage. The place is a little bit far. It's not in Accra or something. Is it uh, going to be the contribution from uh, those people in the squad? Since maybe we are about just a few, yeah. And then you don't have the resources. So right. what can 
All right. So for those of us who be, we don't expect to go too far, right? But where you need to, you need support from the church. The church will provide the support. All right. It comes to transportation. We have a bus and other resources. Will some of us, some of the ministry opportunities will will, will bring in some last key, last key interventions. Those ones, the church will mobilize itself and support the team to pursue it. But let's begin with the chaplaincy to the, assuming it's a hospital. We go there weekly, uh, pick the word of God, share the, um, the, share the, word, the gospel with them, pray with them. Um, once in a while, we go with some provisions. So it's not just visit them with provisions, no, but once in a while. The most important thing is the gospel which brings light to their lives and the healing that comes from your prayer. Right, so that's going to be the focus in these areas. Thank you very much. I think that last one. Oh, you finished, all right. Any questions? Yes, um, Eunice. Um, please, if you already belong to like in-house services, like maybe two or three, Sorry? can you still choose another one? In-house? Yes. Let's say you are, you are part of... Yes, come again. You are part of media, you are part of choir. Can you still choose like another... Yeah. Will have way that you could choose as many ministry you want, but you want to ensure that there's efficiency. And so that you, you, you don't find yourself in so many areas, and I don't know, you move up and down, you don't get the best out of you. So you focus on the two for us. I know some of you have so much passion for many ministry opportunities, but let's limit them to the two. So when you choose one in house, please choose one outside for us. Don't choose two in house. Yes. May we take the last question? The top there, does anybody have a question? All right, so we take the last, the last one. No, I wanted to know that those who have already filled the forms, if you, you've already chosen two in-house groups, what, what will you do about that? So them? take another one. Take, take another form okay. and fill it. So we will, we will reconsider what we have. If you already chose two in-house ministries, please fill another form for us. Please, Eric, do you want to ask a question? Okay. So, please, that will be the last question. Then we'll be on our feet, then we'll pray. Then okay, we, thank you. The right. community service, uh, please, does it include uh, orphanages? No, please. Okay, thank you. Yeah. The orphanage is on its own. All right, in all humility, let's be on our feet. If only clap, you can clap. I've, I, I heard somebody clapping. So tell somebody, this year is a year of business. It's a year of business. This year is a year of business. It's kingdom business, kingdom business. Kingdom business. Hallelujah. All of us are going to be involved. Nobody should be left behind. And you have something within you which God is going to use to touch the life of somebody out there. I want to just close your eyes and commit yourself to the hands of the Lord. Yes, Lord. Just commit yourself to the hands of the Lord that God will endure with grace. And that you avail yourself totally to this commitment. In the name of Jesus, just, just ask God to touch you. God to place that, that thing in you that will cause you to avail yourself massively. Grant me grace, Lord.